On our Make Me Smart question, this one is a little bit cynical, or in the words of our producer, Sam Anderson, Rizdalian. Oh, please. <laughs> and it comes, oh, please. you're getting a reputation. It comes from listener Katie Brown. My name is Katie. I'm a PhD student studying climate policy. And as my side hustle, I work for a think tank that reports on the UN climate negotiations. Something that I thought I knew, but I later found out I was wrong about, is that the global diplomatic effort to address climate change is about the climate. It's not. It's about economics. When I first attended the UN climate negotiations as a wide-eyed student, I expected to witness these really technical discussions about how we measure emissions or perhaps how we evaluate risk. Instead, over time, I've realized that at their core, all of these negotiations are about money. The current global agreement, which is also known as the Paris Agreement, is built on the trust that if one major economy, say the United States, foregoes economic growth in order to prevent severe climate change, another major economy, say hypothetically China, will also forego growth. Similarly, countries in the developing world trust that the opportunities they forego to continue developing and improving the lives of their people will be balanced out by financial support from wealthy countries. It's a really complicated and delicate dynamic. And yes, it's about climate and uncertainty and risk. But at the end of the day, it's mostly about money. Yeah. I, so look, number one, yes, that's true. Number two, I, I guess I would just quibble with one little word in there, and that is forego economic growth. I think maybe a better and more constructive way to think about it is to think of it as not foregoing economic growth, but refocusing where your growth is going to come from, right? Because there are billions and trillions to be made in climate-friendly um, businesses, industries, sectors, and companies um, mm -hmm. that, you know, some of which we haven't even thought of yet. And they will grow because this area is going to grow. Uh, it's, just mm -hmm. a question of, it's just a question of when and how fast. So you're not foregoing growth so much as you are redirecting where your growth comes from. That is, that is my two cents. Right. I, w I could see that in our kind of uh short-term mindset which is mm -hmm. yep you know how governments and well, companies and politicians, operate right for sure yeah and politicians exactly yeah. they're thinking i can't it's there's no there needs to be like the concept of a growth a rebuilding year you know like you have a sports franchise and they lose all their stars mm -hmm. or everybody on the warriors gets hurt and then you have to like invest in rebuilding with the knowledge that you will win again in the future yeah, I, I guess I, would, I guess I would say that really what you want to do is think of it not as a rebuilding year, right? Because that kind of insinuates that you're you're taking a pause and you're actually just sitting back right. and waiting for stuff to happen. I think the catch, of course, is that you have to go on two tracks. You have to develop on both tracks, right? The the place where all the money is now, right, which is oil and and dirty carbon and all of that jazz, right? Changing, but too slowly. Uh, and but you also have to invest in uh, the place where the money is going to be. Mm -hmm. That's that's the absolutely challenge. anyway. Yeah.